So as far as translation issues number two, let's go to Daniel chapter seven. And again, I'm using the NWT here because I'm familiar with it. And it's a good text when it comes to many of these discussions because a lot of the issues that are often brought up when it comes to either translation or interpretation at times involve views held by those responsible for the NWT. Daniel chapter seven. And let's take a look at verses 13 and 14 first. All right, so, and then I'll specify what is the translation issue. Here in Daniel 7, 13, according to the NWT, I kept on beholding in the visions of the night and see there. Oh, I don't have you guys on. Let me get you up here. <laughs> all right, so now that I have you all on the screen, you can follow along with me or use your own copy of this translation or text. Daniel 7, 13 and 14, I kept on beholding in the visions of the night and see there with the clouds of the heavens, someone like a son of man happened to be coming. And to the ancient of days, he gained access. And they brought him up close even before that one. Verse 14, and to him, that is the one like a son of man, and to him, there were given rulership and dignity and kingdom that the people's national groups and languages should all serve even him. His rulership is an indefinitely lasting rulership that will not pass away. And his kingdom one that will not be brought to ruin. Okay. Now, this part here in Daniel 7, 13. So it says, he was watching the visions of the night and he was beholding with the clouds of the heavens. Someone like a son of man. Okay, and most of us who read the New Testament or the New Testament text about Jesus and the things that he taught and said, we're familiar with that kind of expression and description, right? Someone like a son of man coming on the, the clouds of heaven with power. He said that power and great glory uh, when he was on trial before the Sanhedrin. So here we have in Daniel before those events involving Jesus later, we have Daniel seeing a vision clouds of heaven, someone like a son of man. And this part here, this is the part we're going to deal with in our translation issues today in terms of how it should be rendered and understood. And to the ancient of days, he gained access. We'll get to the rest of this as well, but the key part is here. And to the ancient of days. Now, there in, in the Septuagint or Greek text transmission history of Daniel. So Daniel being originally written in Aramaic. Potentially translated into Greek. Anywhere from the third, uh, second, second to the first centuries BCE. We have evidence in various forms. Um, that would argue for translation of Greek text outside of the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, happening around the second and first century for sure. So at the time when Greek texts of Daniel began to be made by Jews who understood the Aramaic texts and, one, and make, were making texts for Jews and others to read in Greek, we have a, a few different you know, variants, just like we have variants in New Testament texts at times that we can isolate and compare and, and for the most part, determine with a good degree of certainty, which one is the correct reading or certainly the best. And then we can isolate the ones that are just, that got um, through corruption or interpretation of the, of the scribes and, or mistakes of different kinds became part of the transmission, transmission history. But overall, the textual transmission of the biblical documents and related documents is incredibly um, great and, and well-preserved comparatively to other ancient texts. So this part here though, there is not a Septuagint text, not, not a, a Greek text actually, but a, a translation of Origen's Hexapla, the, the Greek translation in the fifth column of Origins Hexapla. There's a seventh century Syriac translation of Origins fifth column Hexapla. 
that instead of saying to the Ancient of Days, says as the Ancient of Days. So in other words, it has the Son of Man in, in maybe like you see here, the Greek text in Daniel, and by the Greek text, I'm, again, keep in mind that there's not always just one text, especially of Daniel, but, but there is still what is considered a more official text than others. And so, nevertheless, the way it says here in the, in the Greek text, like a son of man, it uses a word, os, hos, a rough breathing omega sigma, that, which means like, just like the Hebrew prefix or Aramaic prefix here. And so here, when it says to the ancient of days in, in some Septuagint text, certainly the, the accepted text in, in what is known as the Gaudigen edition today, this right here, it says heos. So instead of hos, heos, it has an epsilon before the omega. And so that's the difference between some Greek texts, which we're going to analyze more critically in a moment, when it comes to rendering this as to the Ancient of Days, and we'll talk about the use of the article there as well, versus as the Ancient of Days or as Ancient of Days. Now, this is a translation issue because of that, really, that um, serio-hexaplaric text from the 7th century. But it's really not the Septuagint text, quote unquote, as, as, in terms of what is accepted as official today in uh, Zeigler's text. But let me read to you um, what I consider one of the best discussions of the issues revol involving the use of hos versus heos in the Greek translations of Daniel 7.13. I can this this discussion in the old Greek translation of Daniel seven through twelve by Sharon Pace Jeanson, the Catholic Biblical Quarterly Monograph Series nineteen. This is a great discussion, and I'm going to read it to you, and we'll discuss it as I read it, so that I hope the issues are clear, and that anyone who brings up this text in the future, not only from a translation standpoint, can explain it. But also, even if we were to accept the reading of the 7th century serial hexaploric reading as the Ancient of Days, that's not inconsistent with other biblical texts regarding the Son of Man. And in fact, it helps make perfect sense of verse 14. I think they both do. Both renderings, hos or heos, when it comes to the highlighted part of the text right there to the Ancient of Days as the Ancient of Days. In verse 14, the Septuagint text, or the Greek text that we have, except for Theodosian, um, another version of the Greek translation of Daniel. So you have, referring to the Son of Man, the one coming upon the clouds, either to or as the Ancient of Days, says that those people's national groups will all serve even him. And in the, in the Septuagint text, the accepted Septuagint text, it does use latruo there, just like in Matthew and Mark, uh, Matthew and Luke 4, where it says to God alone, you must give latruo. Here it says that the Son of Man, the one coming on the clouds, all the people's nations and groups would give him latruo. Theodosian's Septuagint, or Greek translation of Daniel, uses deluo. So like would serve in the sense of like do loss, a slave, uh, um, enslavement, or in the bit religious sense, of course, it's not meant to be derogatory. But that's the devotion you'd be showing. So they're similar. But the more accepted texts do use Latruo here. So how is that possible? Well, certainly if we do accept Hos, the reading of the serial hexaploric text of the 7th century, translation of Origins, 5th fifth, uh, fifth column, in the hexapla, then that would make perfect sense, right? Because as, as really means, you know, like in the sense that it's used here. That's why it's like a son of man, right? He's not really a man when he's on the clouds of heaven. We know that from Revelation, the descriptions that are given. It's a, it's a different type of being, right? It's a heavenly being. But he nonetheless has the 
descriptions that fit enough the Son of Man to be able to identify him. But it doesn't say he was a Son of Man. It's like a Son of Man because he's a heavenly being. And so in the same way, being like the Ancient of Days, he wouldn't be exactly the same, but he would be like him. Hos. Well, what does Hebrews 1, 1 through 3 say? That God made all things through a son who is the character of his being, the copy. How is that not like him? <laughs> it's exactly like him. That's why NWT translates it exact representation or copy, an imprint as it's the same thing. It's not identifying him as the Ancient of Days, right? It's saying he's like the Ancient of Days, if that's how you understand it. Or he's like a son of man. Hulse. But as we'll get to in a moment, that's really not, not the, the best reading. But I think it's just fine and consistent with everything else that we're told about the son of man, Jesus, the one who's God's uh, firstborn son, the imprint of his being, completely contradicts the Trinity, right? They don't share the same being. He's a copy of that being. Well, if you're a copy of something else, you're not the thing you're a copy of. So either that language is nonsense in Hebrews 1, has no meaning whatsoever, none, or it means exactly what it says. He's a copy. He's a character of God's being. He's not God's being or sharing it. He's a copy of it. He's as the Ancient of Days. And he can even appear as God, does he not? Do the other angels not do that in Exodus, in Judges, in John? John 20, my Lord and my God. Judges, it is God we have seen. The angels represent their father, their gods, in that positive sense that God says they're gods. Psalm 82, John 10, Jesus used it himself in his own defense in the same way that we're saying it's used here for one who, as the Ancient of Days son, is like him, is the imprint of his being, the image of the invisible God, as we'll get to further in a moment. Let me read this section. From Jean Sun's um, writing, the old Greek translation of Daniel 7 through 12. I'm going to start on page 96 and I'm going to comment occasionally, but I'm going to go ahead and read it because I think it's so well done and it will give you the information you need to either share through this video or look up yourself. So he cites the text on page 96. He or she, I qu quite honestly don't know <laughs> if it's a man or a woman, Sharon. Jean Sun. So I do apologize for that, but it wasn't my priority to find out the gender of the writer of this publication. One of the most important verses in the Old Greek of Daniel, which has been cited as evidence of theological tendens, or what tendens means is the influential perspective of the writer, their, their viewpoint, basically. One of the most important verses in the Old Greek of Daniel, which has been cited as evidence of, of putting your view into the text, on the part of the old Greek translator is Daniel 7.13, the text we're talking about. In his examination, F.F. F. Bruce, from his work, The Oldest Greek Version of Daniel, he's a Trinitarian scholar, F.F. F. Bruce claims to have uncovered interpretive material, which reveals an astonishing, he's quoting Bruce here, quote unquote, an astonishing statement about the a singular quote, one like a son of man, resumed to quote, that he appeared as, parentheses, the Ancient of Days. That's what Bruce, so Gene Son is here quoting that view from Bruce's work, the oldest Greek version of Daniel. So he quotes Bruce's comments there. Then he cites the different versions <clears throat> of Daniel 7.13, the Masoretic text, Septuagint text, <clears throat> excuse me, what is referred to as 88-SYH or the serial hexaparic text of the 7th century. Here's what he says in response to Bruce. This is Gene Son, page 96. It is important to note that Bruce presents as the Septuagint version, quote unquote, the reading of 88-SYH and not that of the text established by Zeigler right here. <clears throat> 
in the Godogen edition. So Bruce, in his writing, the oldest Greek version of Daniel, page 25, refers to the serial hexaploric translation of the 7th century as the Septuagint. Now, it's a translation of the fifth column of Origins, um, hexapla, so it's earlier than the 7th century, but it's based on another reading, and it itself is not dated to earlier than the 7th century. So Bruce misrepresents 88-SYH as the Septuagint, which is not what Ziegler accepts at the Godogen that I just showed you. And then Gene Sung goes on and says, Bruce offers two explanations to account for the reading of Kai Hos Palaios, or as the Ancient of Days. One, Hos is possibly used as an adverbial conjunction of time with the following sense. As when the Ancient of Days arrived. Then, Kai the bystanders were present beside him. This is Jean Son summarizing Bruce's views and arguments for using the reading of the 7th century Cyril Hexaparic a text as the Ancient of Days. Depending on whether one accepts uh, Paresan Alto or the... Okay. So he says, possibly used as an adverbial conjunction of time as when the Ancient of Days arrived. Two, hos is an ordinary conjunction yielding the astonishing quote-unquote statement of the translator that the Son of Man appeared as the Ancient of Days. So it, it can either be that hos is used as an adverbial conjunction of time as when the Ancient of Days arrived, or hos is an ordinary conjunction yielding, as Bruce says, an astonishing reading or statement that the Son of Man arrives or appears as the Ancient of Days. And then Jean Son continues, Bruce finds other evidence which points to this interpretive activity in the book of Revelation, in which the description of the one like a Son of Man is modeled on the Ancient of Days. Also, in Mark's Gospel, when Jesus speaks of the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, he is convicted of blasphemy. Perhaps, Bruce suggests, because the high priest understood that the Son of Man does come, hos palaios hemeron, as the Ancient of Days. And thus, he knew Jesus was claiming to be the equal of God. So, Bruce is saying, well, maybe the priest in Mark's account is saying that when Jesus said, you'll see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, that he's actually claiming to be the Ancient of Days there. Versus, of course, affirming the statement of the question, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? And then he says, I am. And he goes on to say, you'll see uh, the Son of Man coming on the power uh, with power and glory on the clouds of heaven. So that's Bruce's argument. Okay, well, maybe he went further beyond the Messianic affirmation and saw that Jesus was claiming to be the Ancient of Days. So here's what Gene Son says in reply. If Bruce's reconstruction were accurate for the OG, he would indeed have the appropriate data to argue this case. In fairness to him, it should be said that he does consider Ziegler's text. He does weigh whether the Septuagint reading might be a corruption. At Septuagint, he puts it in quotes because by Septuagint, Bruce is referring to the 7th century Cyril Hexaplark translation of Origins Hexapla, fifth column. <clears throat> but he just says Septuagint, right? He doesn't specify beyond that the way I just did and the way Gene Son does. So then he says, um, and that he does consider the possibility of Christian influence. He says, but it is difficult to avoid the overwhelming impression that these factors are not of predominant importance and that the oldest, <clears throat> excuse me, Greek version of Daniel probably intended the readings and meanings which Bruce describes. This impression is given by the title, structure, wording, and balance of Bruce's article. It is presently our task to investigate whether Bruce has adequately distinguished between the OG or Old Greek translation, Origins text, and possible scribal changes prior to or subsequent to Origin. It is true that the aberrant readings would have been of particular noteworthiness to Christian exegetes, but before we conclude that it is the OG translator and not a secondary scribe who engages in intentional theological tendons, or putting your viewpoint into the text, 
we must first subject the, the above texts to critical, text critical investigation. By above texts, he's referring to the different versions of Daniel 7.13. <clears throat> the Septuagint, Masoretic, Cyril Hexaplaric, translation of Origins Hexapla 5th column in the 7th century, and Theodosian, which he cites at the bottom of page 96. Okay. So this is what he has to say in regards to that. This is where we really get into the meat here and where you should pay close attention because it, I'm going to try to simplify it and only read what I have to. But it's important to read and keep it in context because it's not so much longer. And I think Gene San does such a great job in summarizing the technical material. <clears throat> Excuse me. I apologize if my voice gets a little dry, but we're reading a little bit here, as you can see. And I think it's important this time because this book isn't like so available. You can just just go pick up a copy, but I'm sure you can find it online. And this way, at least you'll have the section of material that most directly relates to the translation issue involved in Daniel 7.13. And that is to use or to understand the text according to the Greek translations that use heos, like consistent with the Masoretic text, to the Ancient of Days unto the Ancient of Days, or Hols, like the serial hexaplark reading of the 7th century based on Origins 5th column. As the Ancient of Days, Hols. Which is it? Okay, so let's get into it. Although the serial hexaplark reading of the 7th century has Kai Hols Palaios, Hemeron Parain, as the Ancient of Days he arrived, we note that Zeigler, Gottagen text, accepted Septu uh, Septuagint text, has reconstructed, reconstructed the Old Greek as Kai Heos Palai U. So different from Hos Palaios. In the OG Zeigler, what I just showed you, accepted Septuagint text, it's Heos Palai U, Hemeron Parain. And unto Ancient of Days he came. Or arrived and he came unto an ancient of days so he's not using the article here and he'll get into that further in a moment he or she gene song it is precisely this reconstruction with which bruce disagrees zeigler notes septuagint accepted text that's zeigler goddage and zeigler in this context mean the same thing the daniel septuagint text zeigler notes that tertullian cyprian and col Consultaciones are based on the Old Greek witnesses to heos, parentheses, to palaiu, and not to hos, palaios, as an ancient of days, not to that. So Tertullian, Cyprian, and Consultaciones, Zeigler cites those as witnesses to his adopted reading, which is heos, to palaiu, with two in parentheses, the article before ancient not hos palaios as ancient of days or as a, as an ancient moreover zeigler suggests the probability that heos to unto was corrupted to hos as or like because of the preceding phrase hos huios anthropu as a son of man so just like right here if you're looking back on the nwt translation Basically saying that it was changed from heos to the ancient to like in order to be consistent with this part right here that came just before it in the text. Furthermore, the immediately preceding chi, the word often translated and, makes the loss of epsilon, the epsilon from heos versus hos, more understandable. Since heos was corrupted to hos, He's saying unto or to was corrupted or changed to as or like. The genitive, this is key, palaiu, would have been hypercorrected to the nominative palaios. You see, it's not just the change from heos to hos. Or if you're going to say the serial hexaplark reading of uh, the 7th century translation from origins fifth column hexapla, hos is original and was changed to heos 
you're also dealing with a change from palai u to palai os. And that's more difficult to argue for, as Jin San's going to explain. So he says, since Haos was corrupted to Hos, he's arguing, he or she, Jin San, the genitive palai u would have been hypercorrected to the nominative palai os as an ancient, right? Because it's a description. Not as someone you're coming to, but as someone you're, you're like. So the nominative form versus the genitive for the phrase to be grammatically correct when the change was made from Haos to Hos following Jinsan. Montgomery agrees, this is page 98, the old Greek translation of Daniel 7 through 12. Montgomery agrees that the text of origin, which in this case we're referring to as the serial hexaplaric reading of the 7th century, 5th column, which is incorrectly identified as a Septuagint by Bruce. Jinsan states that Montgomery also incorrectly identifies it as the old Greek, the text of origin. He says, Montgomery agrees that the text of origin, which he incorrectly identifies with the old Greek, preserves an aberration, calling hos palaios as ancient, or as an ancient of days, an ancient error. That's what Montgomery refers to it as in his work, a critical and exegetical commentary on Daniel. And then back to Jinsan. Therefore, instead of calling hos palaios, instead of referring to to the serial hexaplaric translation of the 7th century of origins hexaplaric fifth column as an example of great interpretive weight on the part of the old Greek translator as a theological, you know, influential viewpoint into the text. It should rather be seen as a secondary scribal development in the translation his transmission history of the Greek text, probably even happening in two stages. Haos to hos, the inadvertent loss, then palaiu to palaios, deliberate correction. So what they're, what they're stating here is that the original reading is really reflected in the Masoretic text tradition, which also has uh, support from the uh, Septuagint text, the accepted Septuagint text as represented in Ziegler, which reads haos palaiu, and from Theodosian's text which reads Haos to Palayu. So it uses the article there, both before Palayu and Hemeron, unto the Ancient of Days. But we're going to get further into that um, issue in a moment, the Ancient of Days with or without the article. But at this point, we can see the potential two readings based on the Greek transmission text, transmission of the Greek text, and the Syro-Hexaplaric reading of the 7th century and the Septuagint reading, with the accepted Septuagint reading, heos versus hos, unto versus as. And I don't see really, again, a problem with either one if you look at it in light of what we read later about the Son of Man in terms of him being the imprint of God's being, Hebrews 1. We'll get to that. Let's determine what the text should really say, though. Should it say to the Ancient of Days or as the Ancient of Days? He gained, you know, he was either gained access or, or arrived. All right, so let's get back to Jin Son. So, after stating what he sees as more of a, of a um, secondary scribal development versus a theological intent on the part of the Syro Hexaplark translator, the bishop from the 7th century who is responsible for 88 SYH, the reading, as the Ancient of Days, based on origins, Hexapla. So, after explaining that he sees that more so as a, as a scribal corruption, not as a theological, you know, interpretive view put into the text, but then the, the deliberate part being the secondary change from palaiu to palaios to fit the, the scribal error, Jean Son says this. This is very important. As illustrations of the first stage... There are several similar secondary corruptions which follow this pattern in the recensional history of the old Greek of Daniel as well. So he's going to give examples that show what he believes is similarly done in Daniel 7.13 as a scribal error. So now here are his other examples. He says the same confusion occurs in Daniel 2.43 where a manuscript 967 of the Septuagint has 
kai heos and unto. But 88 SYH, the Cyro Hexaplaric translation of Origins, fifth column, done by a bishop in the seventh century, has kai hos, just like 88 SYH, Cyro Hexaplaric version, seventh century in Daniel 7.13. So just like where, for example, with Theodosian or the accepted Septuagint text, we have heos in Daniel 7.13, kai heos, but in the Cyro Hexaplaric 7th century translation of Origins Hexapla, 5th column, we have Kai Hos. Just like that, we have the same confusion in Daniel 2.43 between Greek manuscripts 967 and 88 SYH. 967 reads, like with Theodosian, the accepted Septuagint text of Daniel 7.13, Kai Hos. In Daniel 2.43, Cyro Hexapla reads, Kai Hos, just like it does in Daniel 7.13. And in Daniel 4.30 or 4.33, 9.67 reads Hos again. And again, and this time, 88-SYH or the Cyro Hexaplar, Hexaplar 7th century has Heos. So you see, it does seem to be scribal confusion and um, a scribal error or corruption that takes place by comparison of the same phenomenon in these other texts involving the exact same words. Furthermore, back to Jinson, we note that in Daniel 12, 10, 12, there is a loss of N after Iselthon. And in 10, 15, there is a loss of Kata. In 11, 15, U is omitted. And Kai is lacking in 11, 21 in secondary developments to the Old Greek. We also note that the reading in the serial hexapla of the 7th century, 88-SYH, as the Ancient of Days, Daniel 7, 13 text, that the reading Paresan al Altu were present beside him in the text that we're talking about, Daniel 7, 13. Jinsan is noting that the serial hexapla's reading, additional reading in that text, Paresan al Altu were beside him, is also a secondary corruption of the original Old Greek Prase Gagon Altun brought him, attested in 88-SYH margin. In the margin of the Cyril Hexapla, that reading of the Old Greek is attested to, which is shown as a set, is corrupted in the text that shows the correct reading in the margin is what, what Jean San is saying. And in Justin, the secondary substitution of Paremi for Prasago I am present versus I, I lead or I bring, was prompted by the reading preceding use of pare me, parain. Once prasegagon was altered to paresan, the corruption of alton to altu follows from sense. Besides the examples noted above where a word with similar letters was confused for another distinct root, we note the other following examples of secondary corruptions in the Old Greek tradition. In 728, the Old Greek reading, watch over, is corrupted to hold fast. And in 828, the Old Greek flow is corrupted to find. It should also be noted, this is Jean Son, page 98, that the Old Greek translation, unto the Ancient of Days, back to Daniel 713, again, our, our subject text, for this translation issues number two, in the context of our wider discussion of worship words, we're talking about Latruo, we're talking about the reading in Daniel 13 of the one like a son of man, the, the one who was given the true in verse 14, and whether he's described as coming unto the Ancient of Days or as like the Ancient of Days himself. Or is it even the Ancient of Days? So it says, Gene Son says, it should also be noted that the old Greek translation of unto the Ancient of Days to an Ancient of Days which lacks the article two, can in no way be interpreted as saying that the old Greek was intentionally lessening the import of the Ancient of Days by referring to him without the definite article. There are two reasons to support this. First, the old Greek does not consistently translate the construct chain, which has the, the nomen rectum, in the emphatic state with the article ta. And then he illustrates what he's talking about here. I'm not going to get too much into it because it can get a little heavy for our discussion, but you can follow up further on your own and look at 
how he uses the word for great, both with, with and without the article in Daniel 7, 2, close to our subject text, Daniel 7, 13, on page 98. And then he says, this example, or Jean-san, again, I don't know if it's a man or a woman. I apologize. Sharon Pace Jean-san. This example is especially interesting because we see, he's talking about he or she, Daniel 7, 2, because we see how a later recension of the old Greek, 88 SYH, alters Eis Megalain Thalassan, a great sea, to correspond more precisely with the Aramaic, the great sea. Here is another example where, where the Cyrohexaplar of the 7th century, 88-SYH, does not preserve the Old Greek, but is rather a later scribal correction. Secondly, the Old Greek was influenced by the previous reference to an Ancient of Days in the Poetic Session, uh, section of 7-9, where he is referred to without the article. It is simply, in the Greek, palaios hemeron. Both these examples show that the rendering Heos Palayu Hemeron to the Ancient of Days or to an Ancient of Days without the article to is representative of typical Old Greek translation practices. This investigation of Daniel 7.13 shows that to make a judgment about putative tendence or inflogical, you know, influence of the text in the Old Greek based solely upon origin Septuagint text without knowledge of the history of the text of Daniel constitutes a serious methodolo method method methodological error. It is essential first to establish critically the Old Greek text and to inquire into the village, the underlying text of the Old Greek, the, of the Hebrew Aramaic text from which the Greek is translated. In this example, the Old Greek translator accurately conveyed the text, that is heos palaius, Heos palaiu, I'm sorry, versus hos palaios. In this case, the old Greek translator accurately conveyed the text, but later corruptions and changes infiltrated the text, accounting for the variations now found in the text of 88-SYH, the Syrohexapla of the 7th century, based on Origins 5th column. So, you know, he's kind of indirectly, I think, referring to Bruce there and how Bruce really didn't look at the texts and the reading of the texts and properly reference them in his study. And so Jinson clearly sees the reading heos um, as the original Greek, just like Zeigler in the Septuagint text versus hos as like that you see in the Syrohexapla reading of the 7th century. And so when Trinitarians, <laughs> some, for whatever reason, they don't even seem to realize that what they're bringing up actually is perfectly in line with our view, number one. And number two, it contradicts their view because they view Jesus either, I mean, if they don't view him as the Ancient of Days and the Trinitarian Godhead, they certainly view him as the equal of the Ancient of Days. And usually the ones I'm talking about, the Trinitarian apologetic nuts, who use this argument, the reading in the Syro Hexapla of the 7th century, based on Origins, Hexapla, 5th column, Hos versus heos, as versus to. The ones who use that usually are arguing that the Son of Man is basically the Ancient of Days here. When it really, even in their own argument, according to this serial hexapla translation of the 7th century, is saying he's like the Ancient of Days. He's as the Ancient of Days. So not only is that not likely the right reading, it's not accepted in Zeigler. It has support from the Syro hexapla translation of the 7th century based on Origins hexapla, 5th column. But it does not really change fundamentally for me, whether we use as or to, how we understand the Son of Man Christologically, according to the New Testament. So there might be a problem in the Jewish sense of people who reject the Messiah as the actual Son of God from heaven who became a man. That could be a problem. And certainly we could see where Jews who rejected Jesus as a figure like that would have translated the text differently, like the Adotian, Heos versus Hos. And maybe where the Masoretic text in, in Daniel 7.13 used the preposition to or unto, not as or like. So you can explain these things each way, I think, transmissionally, textually. 
and come out on one side or the other. But I don't think it really matters. And in spite of spending the last, what, 15, 20 minutes, not sure, reading Gene Son and the explanation of the critical elements of the text that we have to establish first before we really try to interpret the text, right? But then even when we have accepted basically different readings and we understand them correctly so we can measure them and weigh them and say, okay, it could be this, it could be that, but it's probably this or it's probably that, we still need to be able to properly interpret the text according to how they were written. And I don't think either one is a problem because if you understand the, the texts of the New Testament and as they are um, presented in the Hebrew scriptures about the Messiah, you know, the one from ancient days, Micah 5, there are texts and descriptions that can be used to justify him being likened to the Ancient of Days right here. And that would even further justify, I believe, him receiving Latruo right here. So the question is, there's two questions really when it comes to Daniel 7, 13, and 14, right? Is the Messiah described like the Ancient of Days or is the Messiah the Son of Man in this case specifically? It doesn't say Messiah here, but that's who we interpret it as. Is the Messiah here described as coming to the Ancient of Days or as the Ancient of Days? Well, certainly the same figure who's given the Truo here is also being given the very things, rulership, dignity, kingdom, and the people who do this Latruo right there. Okay. So if he's not given these things, he's not given this thing. That seems to be clear. There's certainly no other text that presents the Messiah or any other figure as explicitly receiving Latruo than here and for these reasons. So those who see to the Ancient of Days would also argue, okay, he's, be, he's receiving this stuff from that one, so he can't be that one. So the Latruo is kind of like Philippians 2 being given to him. Every knee shall bow to him and every tongue openly confess that Jesus is Lord, but to the glory of the Ancient of Days to God the Father. But then the Trinitarians who use the Syro Hexapla reading of the seventh century will say, but you know, there are texts that say as the Ancient of Days. So it makes that argument a little bit more difficult. But this is really undisputed, the receipt. So even if you saw the Messiah, the one like a son of man, coming as the Ancient of Days. It has to be understood in a limited sense, not only because it's as, right? Hulse, just like like a son of man doesn't mean he's a son of man, exactly, but like it, like one. Then it it's still limited right here. So in no way, whether it's as or to, or even the use of Latruo, are we given a context where Jesus is identified in an absolute sense as God? It does appear acceptable to give this one Latruo because of his receipt of these things, which are explicitly defined for us in other texts as I just said. So read this text again with me right here. To him, all that were given rulership, dignity, and, pe and kingdom that the people's national groups and languages should all latruo him. People's national groups and languages. Take that right down to Philippians 2, and they're, they're very, very similar. And we know, at least in a Christian sense, they're not contradictory, right? <laughs> Paul and Peter and John, they weren't writing things contradicting Daniel 7. So if we're to understand Daniel 7 and the one like a son of man, whether he's as the Ancient of Days or coming to the Ancient of Days, he's nonetheless being given the very people who then give him Latruo. Notice what it says here. It says that after Jesus gave up the form of a God and became a man, he died faithful to that one. For this reason, God exalted him. Philippians 2.9. 
To him were given rulership, dignity, and kingdom. God exalted him to a superior position. That's certainly more contextually consistent with the reading that he came to the Ancient of Days, right? And that from that one, he received these things. And that, that's exactly what Paul says here. Now, whether that's exactly what Daniel says, or whether it says, as the Ancient of Days, he appeared and then was given these things, <laughs> The fact is clear that at best he's as or like the Ancient of Days, not the Ancient of Days or an Ancient of Days even. And we read how the description in itself and its use in, in the text in Daniel don't require the use of the article because it's essentially a fixed term or expression if it's seen as like a proper name. It's not used to that extent necessarily, but it could still be fixed in that way because of its unique application. But the use of host doesn't apply the term in the absolute sense. It does it as a description like that one. So it, it still doesn't equate to the Trinitarian position. And no matter how you look at it, really. And that's the weakest reading, the corrupt, likely corrupt one. Certainly not the reading uh, host accepted in Ziegler. And so if we're going to look at Daniel as consistent with Paul, at least in Philippians 2. Well, we know for sure, if you if we go on and read, he's given the name above every name. And that could be the divine name. It could be his own name. Because again, what's happening here? In the name of Jesus, every knee bends in heaven and on earth and under the ground. Everything. And every tongue is going to openly acknowledge Jesus Christ is Lord. We're leaving something out there, aren't we? <laughs> that's a big one. Boy, that's a big one because this is only possible. This is only correct. This in Daniel is only correct and possible. Because of this. That's why it's presented in this context. He's given those things. And we're simply allowing the dispute here to kind of cloud our ability to use the fact that he receives these things there. We're kind of granting the Trinitarian interpretation of wanting to use as the Ancient of Days or as Ancient of Days here, which doesn't even give them this, the level of Trinitarian metaphysic they want, equality with the Father. But it just kind of makes it more difficult to use the giving from that one, but it that still occurs nonetheless in association with them serving him. So Trinitarians, you can never get out of the limited qualified use of proskuneo or latruo in the biblical text. They're always qualified when it comes to anyone and everyone except God.